All right, Suffolk. Se Suffolk. 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 Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Andrew Taylor here. We have Brianna Suffolk with us, and we were talking offline about leads and contacting leads and uh, little phone burner tips, and I thought we definitely need to do a quick training on this. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for getting on again. Of course. Thanks for having me. So we were talking about the problems with um, leads that you've overcome and contact rates. And you actually had said, tell us what you said about um, the leads with bad phone numbers. Yeah. So when I had first started, when I would buy my batch of leads and I'd get some bad phone numbers, it would really discourage me. And then the more I started doing it, I realized these are actually bonus leads because no one has called them. And I just go on to fastpeoplesearch.com and I type in the, either their name or their address. And if it comes up the same, then that is a golden door knock because no one has called them about it. They're not getting blown up. And then chances are no one else is going to go door knock them. So the bad phone numbers, as long as you verify their address, the door knock those people. I can't tell you how many times I've sold policies to people and I'm not worried at all about them getting you another know, call. Yeah, another call because they, they didn't put the right phone number. That's huge. How often do you do that? Every week. Every I, I What I'll do is I'll just, I have a new folder on my um, phone burner and those are just bad phone numbers. And so I'll put them all into there. And then at the end of my night, like around 9, 30, 10, not during dial hours, I go through and I look them up on Fast People Search. And then I just take a picture of the, of the computer screen and then I'll go and door knock them and I'll say, hey, Andrew, you sent in this request. I'm just the local underwriter. We haven't been able to get a hold of you you know, let's take care of this either now or I'll come back tomorrow. And I, it, I, it's amazing. Wow. That's cool. Okay. So we also talked about phone burner. A lot of agents use phone burner when they're working internet leads. Yes. And you had said, I had asked you about like the number coming up as spam likely. Yes. So you can go on call registry and register your phone number to get it verified. You do have to continue to do that every day. So you do that every day? Yes. How long does that take? A minute and a half. How many people do you think do that every day? Probably a small percentage, but I don't, I mean, everybody should be doing it every day. But also, it's what you make of it. So if they answer, and they say, well, why is your phone number coming up as spam likely? You just say, oh, well, which carrier do you have? Yeah, that's, that's, it must just be your carrier. Just minimize it. Like, I oh, that's what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So if they say I have AT&T, you say it's probably them? Yeah, because like, I'll, I'll be booking an appointment and they'll say, well, why does your phone number come up as spam likely? And I'll either just say, oh, it must just be your carrier. I don't know. Or I'll just say, oh, well, I have to use a computer system because we have so many requests to get through. So that's why. But if you just like minimize it, you can just continue on booking the appointment. So no big deal. No big deal. But then also, if somebody is, if I'm dialing them and they're sending me to voicemail, I will call you 15 times in a row. And I will call you after a certain point with the star 67. Um, How do you do that on phone burner? So I'll just like keep dialing, keep dialing on phone burner, and then I'll pause the dialing on phone burner and then just use my phone. I'm already holding it anyways. Just go onto my regular, you know, phone as if I'm going to call somebody, star 67, their number. You know, you can book maybe like one to four more What if they go, what do you want? Week. Yeah, hi, Andrew, this is Brianna. I'm getting back to you about the requests that you sent in about the state regulated life insurance information. You just like, you're just like, yes, hi, I'm calling you a lot because you sent in this request. We haven't been able to get a hold of you. I'm coming over tomorrow. You just say, yeah, I'm calling you a lot because you sent this in? Yeah, I'm sorry, Andrew. We've been trying to get a hold of you. We're getting back to you about the requests that you sent in. You do have to match them. But one of my biggest uh, policies that I ever wrote was a guy that answered the phone, what? Because I had called him like seven or eight times because he was sending me to his voicemail. And he actually just called me like two days ago just to see how I was doing. 
Like they, like they might be annoyed in the minute that they answer, but once you explain to them why you're calling them, verify the information, and set the appointment, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I've had so many people apologize to me over the phone. Oh, I'm sorry I was sending it to voicemail, or I'm sorry that you know I answered like that. I just get a lot of, people are getting blown up by telemarketers, by you know the car warranty people, and all these people that they actually don't care about. So it's your job to like let them know your position and you know we're not calling them we don't just pick numbers in a phone book you sent in this request so i'm calling i'm doing my job that's huge what other tips do you have for people well, when it comes to the phones i think that a big part of it is buying enough leads so that you are kind of relaxed you're not like you don't only have 50 leads and you're trying to really like squeeze the most out of them. It's like when you have 200 leads, whatever, you know, it's I know that I will get my 15 yeses. And so I just, you know, buy enough leads and then understand your position. They filled out the form. They sent in the request, whether it was five minutes ago or, you know, five months ago. They were looking into this at one point for their family. And so it's just our job to get them the information, go over the different options. If they already got it taken care of, it's just my job to review that policy for you, make sure that you're in the best hands. And just understanding your, you're not bothering them, you're not a nuisance to them. They did send in the request, and it is you're the one with the license. So you have to make sure that you do everything that you can to put their family in a better spot. And that's just the mindset that I have about it. That's huge. So you're an animal on the phones. Yes, I will call you 15 times in a row. And then, you know, people are working, people are busy. So I go through all of them in the first half of the day, and then I go back through them. Like on dial days, I am mentally prepared to be there from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m. Like that's just, it is what it is. I'm not worried about what else is going on. I'm not, like that is my Monday and my Thursday is 8 a.m. until 9 p.m. I can have an hour lunch break and watch a like FFL YouTube video while I'm eating just to like keep me in like the positive uh, mindset. And then I'm just prepared to be there 13 hours and then I will, if I'm having a rougher day on the phones, I will leave my Tuesday morning or my Friday morning open so I can dial more because those morning hours are like so precious and then the evening hours are great for the phones. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I see that will come into the office and they come in at like 10 a.m. and they leave around like four or five and they wonder why they're not having the success that they see. They and start at like 10 Yeah, they just scroll in. Roll in, what am I gonna dial today? Yeah, they don't even have their leads set up. And it's like, you have to be prepared the night before, and then you have to have the mentality that I am gonna book 15 to 20 appointments. These people requested it, they need me, I don't need them. And um, just being able to handle the rejections on the phone, you have to just keep it going, you have to just don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. And that's why phone burner is amazing because you can just click and it automatically is dialing the next one. But don't feel sorry for yourself. You just have to keep it going. And then even if you have a rough day, you can call those same leads like in a month from now and you'll book appointments from the same people that told you, you know, mm -hmm. to kick rocks. So one of my friends who's kind of who's pretty lazy. I always mess with them and I'm like, this is what your schedule's like. You wake up at like ten. And then you go like, what's for lunch? What, what am I going to do for lunch? Then you have lunch and then hang out. And then you start planning what's for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've lived like that. That is not a bad way to live. It is amazing. <laughs> but now that I'm working like 80, 90 hours a week, I feel so good at the end of the day. Like after having a crazy field day where I had appointments from 8.30 a.m. until 8.30 p.m., like coming home at night, normally with my Chipotle, and just like- Is that your, your like um, my, treat in the to field, yourself? Yeah, in the field treat. Like even if I have a rough day, I love um, 
because you can order on the app. It's just so convenient. So I'll just like get Chipotle. But like I feel so good at the end of the day from like working so hard, even if I had a terrible day and I had eight sits, zero, you know, didn't help anybody. I still feel so good and so fulfilled with working hard. And I think that that's amazing. Okay. How do you feel if you say you're going to do it and then don't? Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Me too. I st still to this day, if I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it, even if it's get up at a certain time, it just mm -hmm. sets the wrong tone for the entire day. Yeah. It's almost like taking a loss at the beginning of the day. Right. Yeah. That's why I like making your bed, just that little win and yeah, the little wins. And then you'd be surprised the compound effect, you know, you don't, you might not feel it in the moment, but you, like we all say, you can have a bad day, you might have a bad week, but if you show up and put the activity in, there's no chance that you're going to have a bad month. But it's, it's easy to get discouraged and then, oh, well, maybe I will sleep in a little bit tomorrow and maybe I will, like, not dial for that extra hour. It's those little choices that you make. Being at the office at 7.45 a.m., being, you know, going that extra, doing that one extra door knock, like all those little things, that is where like the real and they magic add up. happens. It really adds up. The little things add up. Yes, definitely. And just, I think that it's very easy to be emotional in this business. I mean, it's money that you're putting into it. It's your time. It's the rejection and everything. But I think the less emotion that you can have, and if you just really treat it like a like you've just put in the code to your brain and just don't deviate from the code and just this is my schedule this is what it is whatever happens it doesn't matter i'm going to show up every day that's when yeah the little really stuff matters success. so like probably like five years ago i was just like drinking and partying all the time and eating terrible food mm -hmm. and i gained like 40 pounds okay and I had to lose the 40 pounds. So I started to looking into like eating good and exercising and all this stuff. Right. Well, I asked my friend who's like, like he puts people on meal plans and like counts like your cal macros or whatever. <laughs> but I was like, okay, if, how many hamburgers do you think I've eaten in my, in my life? And we're like, get trying to guess. Right. And I'm, I was like, if I just had, one bun instead of two on every hamburger I've ever had, would I weigh, how many pounds less would I weigh right now? And we did the math and it was like 40 pounds less. Wow. So the, the, the reason I'm saying that, and that's kind of a crazy thing to sit to a crazy analogy, but the little stuff ends up adding up in the end. So like that door knock, that, extra call that extra hour on the phone all that stuff adds up and ends up being significant at some point yeah i mean definitely think about how much you're missing out if you're not serious about your schedule because if you're not serious about your schedule it just makes it harder for you in the end it's it might be harder in the short term to be diligent about your schedule and to like be very serious with your time but you can accomplish so much in two, three years versus if you just did it a little bit, a little bit here, there, that might take you like six years to get to the same place if you just put your head down and we're serious for two, three years. Yeah, that's huge. Well, thank you for sharing. I think this is get, this can help a ton of people just getting a uh, higher percentage of pickups on the phone, you know, and yeah. squeezing out those extra door knocks. So and Door knock, door knock those bad leads. It's And you did 70 policies last month. So this isn't like you're saying to do something that's not working. Right. No, you can definitely. The system is laid out for you. Like FFL has made it so simple. The amount of different lead sources, it's unbelievable. There's no reason why this isn't working for somebody other than it's them, you know? That's huge.